more thoughts on race. I didn't realize I was going to talk that much. Um, so it's important. Uh, the only people that only care about being white are white supremacists. It's the only people that I know that says white is something. White matters. I'm white, so that means I get all these benefits and privileges, and that's the way it should be. Well, that's uh, there's also you know that. So in my experiences, the only people that say they're white are fucking big you know douchebag racists. But also, the people that have uh, um, uh, also colored what white means are my you know ancestors or American history. And American history shows white people just killing one group after another group. It was first as the Indians, and then uh, you know they're slaving Africans and they're attacking. You know, they basically George Carlin had this joke where it's like white people find a color and they try to wipe it out. So yellow. Uh, Chinese people, red Indians, brown Mexicans, it just seems like any, they find a color and they try to wipe it out. And that's like, uh, America's been at war since 1492, so the legacy of what white people have done for hundreds and hundreds of years is not a legacy I recognize. It's not a legacy that I, um, you know, that I will uh, adapt for myself. So if that's what white means, then I am I'm opting out of that. You know, no, I am not going to, you know, uh, uh, be... Uh, siding myself with people who have lynched black people, who have enslaved black people, who have murdered and pillaged and killed Indians. Um, that is not the history I'm going to endear to myself. I'm not going to hold on to that history for for me. You know, I won't ignore that it's a his, part of the history, but when it comes to what I use to uh, define myself, th that is not the part of history I'm going to grab and say, well, that's who I am. You know, I look at the Germans who were fighting for the Union. I look for the Germans who were uh, part of the Underground uh, Railroad, and they're helping black folks get to slavery. There's a German town next to Maysville and Louisville and Cincinnati were lots of Germans, and these are pivotal points for black folks uh, going to to the north and get, gaining their freedom. So there was a strong Underground Railroad movement with the German community. Germans were attacked by the Confederates. They are where they my my racist cousins are actually loving a the group who were oppressing and attacking the group showers, the native German group showers who came to Sanfordtown, Kentucky. So Sanfordtown was being attacked by John Hunt Morgan, the John Hunt Morgan, the Thunderbolt of the Confederacy, who I was raised to uh, uh, adore. I was raised to hate Lincoln too. Um, but these folks are heroes. Lincoln is a hero. He's freed the slaves and he unified America. I mean, what is, what's not the love about that? He also had the Homestead Act and uh, uh, a lot of other progressive measures. Lincoln is a huge part of American history, very important president that we had. And he's from Kentucky, so they, uh, they're buying into this um, horrible culture, uh, probably just because of people that they're raised around and ignorance. And they're ignoring this really great uh, uh, cultured German history and heritage and, and culture. So so to, to some of my racist cousins, uh, I broke a law one time when somebody dropped an N-bomb, you know. I was like, shouldn't we judge a person by the content of their character and not the color of their skin? I pulled out some MLK on them. And immediately it was like a hush just, you know, through the crowd, like, hush. What did he just say? You could hear a pin drop. Oh, my God. We got one person here that's not a racist. We've been having all these racist parties, and turns out one of us is not a racist. So when I said that, um, you know, there was a hush, and there's there looks, and one of my cousins, like, turned his back on me, and he's like, us white people need to stick together. Um, and so, you know, I know exactly really what... What I see to them, to them, I'm a nigger lover. To my white racist cousins, I'm a nigger lover. And when it comes to Willis Russell out of Owen County, who was fighting against black folks, no, <laughs> Willis Russell out of Owen County, who was fighting against the Ku Klux Klan, it shows how much of the minority that you're in when you're fighting against the Klan. And in fact, there's there's a ton of similarities I see, I guess, with my own life and the black. Uh, history, the black uh, African American history, the uh, you know during times of slavery, the black person would get hit and beat over the head all the time, and you couldn't say anything about it. You couldn't look the master in the eye. You couldn't uh, speak up for yourself or have any pride or dignity. Black folks were getting lynched for every little stupid little thing, um, you know, making eye contact with the master. But some of them would be like uh, having a menacing thought. They looked at him wrong and had a thought that was wrong or uh, 
some other uh, general principles. Some black folks in Kentucky were hung for general principles. Just just general principles. I mean, what is that? What is that bullshit about? So, um, and sometimes the black folks were lynched because the white women started loving them some black men. And when they were caught, the white women deflected and, you know, defended their reputation among the white racists and they would let the black man be killed. Uh, so these are, you know, this is the legacy that people are carrying on. Um, but, but the point is, it just shows how much opposition that there are to uh, white allies and people that fight against slavery. I was comparing my life with uh, that of, of slaves. Yeah, I, you know, I was supposed to accept a bunch of abuse and a bunch of, uh, you know, violence upon me, and I had to do a bunch of work in order to, you know, um, nonstop. I was having to do something, so, you know, always like some housework or some outside work. Uh, constant culture of fear, and so this culture of fear is like I had to accept all the violence and abuse and humiliation that was put on me to make me do work. Uh, but the one time that I defend myself, that's the one time that, you know, all of society, basically where I was raised, uh, tried to lynch me. They tried to lynch me. So, so that's my personal life. I mean, I hear, I hear, I feel the black history, um, you know, literally. I got 11% African in me and I don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not black. I know that, like, I'm not, uh, you know, nobody looks at me and says, what's what's that black man doing coming down down the street? Um, with the one drop rule, I would have been considered black uh, to some of the purest. But I do feel among white people I am unique that I don't uh, understand the a lot of white people. I'd say 50% of white people I got an issue with, and I feel separate from them. So in a way, I don't... Uh, I'm not I'm not black, but I feel like I am kind of treated as somebody that's not among them. I'm also expressive, and I like hip hop, and a lot of uh, I like a lot of black culture and uh, black history. Um, so I'm, I feel like I'm a different kind of, you know, European American, a German American. And I don't like the label white to be put on me, frankly. I'm not literally white, you know. Uh, not only do I not take any pride of it, and I don't like the people who say that they're white. I don't. I'm not literally that color. So, I have not <laughs> even got to. All right, let's, let's get through this. So, racism. Look what happens to the white allies. Look what happens to the white allies. You got RFK, JFK, you got Abraham Lincoln, you got... Charles Sumner and Willis Russell, RFK, JFK, bam, bam, right through their head. And Lincoln shot. So you defend black people, you get shot in the head. That's one effect of white allies. Charles Sumner, he was fighting for Lincoln's vision after Lincoln was shot. So he was a radical Republican during Reconstruction. And Charles Sumner was caned right on the floor of the House of Congress, right in the middle. So everybody saw him get you know, beat up by a dude with a cane with a big like pole. They hit him with the pole over and over again. He had to go to the hospital for like a, a while. So that was for defending black folks. And Willis Russell out of Owen County, Kentucky, he single-handedly fought the Ku Klux Klan. The Ku Klux Klan was attacking all black people and all radicals, you know, who thought that blacks were equal. So any white person who had sympathized with uh, black folks not being slaves anymore were also being attacked by the Ku Klux Klan of Owen County, Kentucky. And it took Willis Russell to fight all of them, the city attorney and the sheriff and uh, the county uh, the county attorney and the sheriff and a lot of the politicians and a lot of, uh, you know, good standing men in the community were a part of this racist organization. So, you know, there's a, I mentioned discrimination before, that was white, white allies. So white allies standing up for black folks is is obviously the right thing to do. You know, anybody... Anybody that's oppressed, I mean, just your skin color doesn't mean that I'm, I'm fighting for you. But overall, when it comes to the black community, since they are, in, there's institutional racism, I'm, I'm down with the cause with black folks. I don't, I'm not a liberator. There's no such thing as a liberator. The people have to liberate themselves, but I'm right there uh, on the side of the, you know, of, of the black struggle. So I'm fighting, you know, uh, on the side of the black struggle. I think that's all right. Um. 
the uh, okay way to say it, and it's not like saying I know what's best for everybody. Do as I say, but more or less, I'm here, and I can you know I can only do so much, but I'm I'm here to help. Uh, discrimination, it's all pretty much black and white in America, but it's a lot of discrimination. You know, it can go in any direction: racial discrimination, sexist discri discrimination, homophobic discrimination, it's discrimination against ugly people and fat people. Um, so there's, you know, there's a bias against fat people, and uh, also like some black folks, they love themselves some white Jesus, but they don't love me. So it's possible that, um, you know, there's prejudice and discrimination and racism. And prejudice is the idea, and the discrimination is having the power to uh, use the prejudice against somebody. And then racism, I, some people says it's how society looks at it, but it, uh, I've always used it as uh, discrimination when you want to discriminate. I, I guess I've always used it for prejudice. Anytime you didn't like anybody, then you're prejudiced, so you're a racist if you're prejudiced against people. Um, but, I mean, if we really want to break it down, I feel like if it's just prejudice is just in the mind and the discrimination is the action, then you have some, you could have, you know, I don't know, you could have one racist person who, you know, is doesn't like, let's, Let's just make a typical white person, or whatever, or a typical uh, Confederate. They they don't like black folks. So you have a person who has it in their mind that he's prejudiced, but he doesn't have power. Then it doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't really matter. Like it matters that their mind should be straight, and they shouldn't have so much hate for a group of people just based on, you know, what their daddy had taught them. Um, but it's the discrimination that's the, the part that hurts, you know, the discrimination part. And so if you take that same Ku Klux Klan person who's racist and you put him in a position of authority where he could hire people and he was just like, I, don't, I will not ever hire black folks, then that's discrimination. And I think that's when it matters the most, when the action actually hurts somebody else. So I, I remember uh, in one of my classes, an African-American woman was like, oh, white people, they just need to go somewhere else. They need to go somewhere else to combat racism. And she's like, you white people just need to go somewhere else. Well, that's racist, okay? Um, and, and ironically, a white person later on kissed this black supremacist on the cheek. So, you know, the, she's a hypocrite. Um, but evidently, it does, it takes white and black folks to end racial oppression. If a white person is kissing a black person on the cheek, then that's showing that there is love between the different, you know, races, and so that's how racial oppression is to be ended. There's several ways. I think interracial marriages is good, but I think integration is, like, a great idea. Integration was a great genius idea. I don't think it'll totally solve everything, but, yeah, we should all get along. I think not only, you know, uh, traditionally oppressed, you know, groups of people like black folks and women and, um, you know, gay folks and, and, and Mexicans and anybody else, but also... Uh, we got to pay attention to handicapped folks, and we got to pay attention to ugly folks and overweight folks, and we got to pay attention to a lot of these uh, clarifications and descriptions of people um, if we are truly trying to build about a multicultural society, one where we're inclusive of everybody. We appreciate all of our differences uh, while at the same time recognizing our similar humanity. Um, so... The, the, you know, I saw very little difference in the way my racist cousins was talking and the way that she had, was talking. So you know, white people just need to go somewhere else, and they were saying, well, black people need to go somewhere else. So they'll never solve, you know, the racial problem. They'll, you know, I guess stick in their own communities. And there there is some argument to that. Huey Newton had said something about um, uh, black people organizing and then white people organizing, and then later on when they have mutual interest for those two groups to get together. Um, but I'm an integrationist, so that's that's, and I think that takes you know all all people to end all types of racism, sexism, homophobia, anti-Semitism, you know, you name it. Um, so um, also both of the groups, both my racist cousins and this African uh, American woman, they they wouldn't accept that I had African blood in me. They didn't accept me really as a person into their cliques. They're both segregationists. They're anti-integration. Um, so, you know, I, it's it's kind of frustrating. I feel like the black supremacists and white supremacists should go somewhere and, and fight amongst themselves, and then the integrationists should all get together and bring about this multicultural society um, that seems really to be obvious. Where That's the direction that America should go. Uh, we're a nation of immigrants, and, you know, some was by choice and some wasn't. 
um, but we're a diverse nation of lots of different peoples, and we should, we all the same, we all bleed red, but we should appreciate all of our differences too, so.